Well, greetings from Down Under. Dr. Lena Rodriguez, your esoteric journalist, coming to you. Now, intrepid viewers, you know how I've been saying what a stupid deal the submarines were, that we were going to pay tens of billions of dollars to France for submarines. I thought that was stupid, but I was wrong. There's something more stupid, and that's cancelling that contract and buying more submarines via the UK and the US, right? So it's one of those acronyms you can't pronounce, whatever it is, this new pact, and they're nuclear powered. So we're going to have all these little Chernobyls parked in the ocean, really? And then on top of that, don't tell the French. Don't tell them. Just pretend it's happening until it's world news that you've signed with another two parties. How rude. How very rude. And then I think it's a really clever idea to say we're doing this because China's too powerful and we're doing this to counter China and it's all about pushback to China. They're our biggest trading partner in Australia. You don't have to say anything. China would work it out in about a nanosecond. Of course, it's all about them. But you don't parade that around the world. And then that forces China because it loses face to have to respond. It's so dopey as to be mind-blowing. And it didn't help. The poor old Joe couldn't remember the name of our illustrious Prime Minister. Someone could have held up a sign saying, this is Scotty from marketing. You know, I can't be everywhere, viewers. I could have been there telling him exactly what his name is. So we're signing on at huge public expense and they'll be ready in 2040. China better wash out. Look out, we're coming in 2040. Ooh. <laughs> the only protection we've got against China's power is to have really healthy trade relations that they don't want to lose. That's the smart way through. We cannot hold China back. We're 26 million people with a few poxy submarines. Are they mad? Are they truly mad? Anyway, let's move on. In um, other news, oh, got so much. Um, Eric Trump. It's funny even before you tell the story, isn't it, really, Eric Trump? So he goes on Fox. Remember, it's not a news channel. It's just Fox. More and more people are calling it the Fox virus. I love that. Let's do it. Okay, so Eric Trump goes on and he whinges and whines and complains and carries on that they're drowning in subpoenas. Every day we get more subpoenas, me and the whole family, we just keep getting subpoenas. Oh, pet, why would that be? So I was, of course, thrilled with this little development. So... One of the things they've been doing, where is it? I wrote down the figures for something. Oh, yes, just this is one, one tiny story. This is nothing to do with emoluments or defrauding the entire American people about a mythical electoral response. No, 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 no. This is just one of their properties, which is in Westchester County, New York. And... The investigators noticed that this property was valued sometimes for $20 million and sometimes for $290 million. They thought no one had noticed, right? I mean, they're as thick as two short planks, aren't they? I think I have to use my other cards for this. I'm going to use the Toth deck. And um, those of you who are regular viewers will know that I use this when I'm dealing with craven, slippery hypocrites, corrupt officials and so forth. So let's look 
at how the family's travelling because even though they brush it off, you know, it has to be stressful. Every time you open the door, <laughs> there's another subpoena. Hello, special delivery. Do you want fries with that? So let's see. The Trump family and the subpoenas. Trump family subpoenas. Well, I hope New York's got more teeth than the others and actually make them comply with these subpoenas. What's happening? Here we go. Well, I'm pleased to report I think it's finally starting to sink in. Not entirely because there's still, you know, floatiness there. That They're not very well moored to reality, right? So if you were born as a little trumpet and you had this narcissistic uh, absolute nightmare father and a fairly delirious mother in the form of mother of dragons, Ivana Trump, you don't have much hope of growing up sane, sensible, compassionate and certainly not intelligent. So I could almost feel sorry for them under other circumstances. But I don't. Okay, so in the middle, the card of the mercenary, there they all are because that's what I was just saying about the family. That's what they were taught to be. You call yourself a real estate mogul, but in fact, you're a money laundering machine for the Russian oligarchs. And that's okay, because the same Eric Trump said it was okay back in 2016. We're getting so much Russian money. And so this is at the core is their behaviour. This doesn't even touch on ripping off children's charities and any of this. This is just the sheer real estate turnover and manipulation. So at the core, they're completely mercenary. So, yes, there'll be issues. Look, emotionally, I think it's beginning to flow over you see this card there's this, it's sort of all this emotional energy and it's all interconnected right you see how it goes with them all their fates hang on each other and they can't trust each other so before they could always hide behind daddy in his badly cut suits and his made in china ties but I don't know that they're going to be able to um, actually emotionally sustain through this. Behind them, this is lust, and it's a lust for power. I'm not worried so much about who's bonking who. I'm, I couldn't care less, and I don't want the visual image. It's more about a lust for power. But here we come to the interesting cards. On top of the reading, the energy over the issue, it's the death card. Their through line through the middle here, I'll just show you what I call the through line. One, two, three. Sorry, it's not easy to see. One, two, three. So you have the death card, the mercenary, and then this very murky emotional energy and dependence. We then have the Prince of Wands. It's very like the chariot figure. So um, with this, I think this is the court cases charging forward and it's rapidly becoming a burden. Now, why is it becoming a burden? Well, it's very hard to keep manipulating money at the pace they've been manipulating money. To keep going is actually quite exhausting because they met, they employ some guy from the dry cleaners to be, you know, a money manager and they employ 
um, you know, a taxi driver to run their campaigns. And so they don't have a highly skilled workforce to fall back on. So it's becoming more of a burden. And you can just, I've just got a mental image of Trump sitting back to the boys particularly. You were in charge of that, Don Junior. You were in charge of that, Eric. You know, why haven't you sorted it out? You know, that sort of thing, completely separating himself from the, the mini monsters he's created. But I think emotionally it's beginning to take a toll, and so it should. Now, um, the California result, of course, must be celebrated. I'm so thrilled with that. Um, in other good news, Beto is going to run up against Abbott in 2022. So we'll have a look at that. But just before we leave manipulation and money laundering, apart from the money laundering, there's also another facet to the family business, which is Ivanka's domain. And Ivanka's, um, you know, claim to fame was running, it was basically um, a real estate fraud scheme in Panama. Do you remember? So, you, you know, you'd get a shiny prospectus. There's only two more condos to be sold when, in fact, they hadn't even built them and they hadn't sold any others and all that usual thing. So I noticed this week there was a rapper called Maurice Fain and he ripped off people in a similar type scheme for $3.7 million, 3.7 mil. A lot of money to you and me, a lot of money. But he got caught. Now he got 17 years jail. You have long sentences in America, but not for rich white folks, it appears. So I thought that's a yardstick. Ivanka should be looking at 17 years, but rich men don't hang. So this is part, I think, of what the universe is unveiling um, over all of this, that when, if someone rips off $3 million, they'll get that sort of sentence, but you rip off 300 million and it's okay. We can all go home. It's not okay. It's not okay. But on the light of things, let's have a look at the dreadful Governor Abbott, you know, talk about vanilla ISIS. I mean, isn't he frightful? But feel confident, viewers, a year, two years from now, they are going to pay the price for this dreadful draconian handmaid's tale law. I send prayers to any women caught up in it between now and then, for sure. But I think it's going to lose them an election. But let's see about Beto himself. I'll move back to my nice cards for Beto. We'll have to keep our eye on this because energy changes, right? So we've got to keep tabs. But I'm pleased he's still persevering. While I'm shuffling, let's talk about AOC's dress. Tax the rich. Good on you, AOC. It's got the whole world talking. Hello. Yep. And it's such a foreign concept whether it's Australia, the UK, or tax the rich. Oh, oh, isn't that wrong? Um, aren't we supposed to defend rich people? Tax the rich. What if I get rich one day? I don't want to be taxed. Uh, uh, tax the rich. Uh, 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 uh. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Now, my view differs from AOC, bless her, I think, and I could be wrong about this, let me know, viewers, I think she supports what's called progressive taxation. Progressive taxation, if you earn this much money, you pay this much tax. If you earn more money, you pay more tax. If you earn more money, you pay more tax. And it goes up and up and up, the actual percentage of taxation. 
I don't think that works because it's been tried in other countries and they just send their money to other countries and you don't get anything. What you're better off doing is keep it at 25% or something, but make them pay it. What if Google paid 25% tax instead of nothing at the moment? It pays nothing. Mm -hmm. So I think it's an improvement to get 25%, whereas they have a moral argument. If you're going to charge them 70% of their income, people are going to go, oh, that's not right, I'm not comfortable with that, or and they find themselves defending the rich. So take that away. If you and I can pay 22 or 25 or whatever it is, they can too. Make them pay it. So Beto, love you, Beto. Beto. How's it going to go next year? Let's see. Oh, oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, right. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So he got this very gorgeous temperance card in the middle, and this is him. Let me hold this up. Sorry, I'm doing this on my bed, so it's awkward. The angel of grace and mercy, just beautiful, and he does represent that really calm energy, right? Really calm energy. Now, this is in the past. He had to make compromises. He did his best. He visited, I think, every county in Texas, painstakingly explaining to people, this is what I take this card to mean. And then what was done, what was the action against him was the Ten of Swords doesn't need an explanation. Who was responsible for that action? I'm glad you asked the king of pentacles. I don't think it's a single king. I think it means big money, old money in Texas. Um, there's no way they were going to let him get through and he paid the price and that was because they are in league with the devil. So reminding, and I think this is a different devil meaning here in the sense that this represents big business you know these are the ones who are destroying the gulf of mexico um, to extract gas and everything else um, and then can't keep the power on those ones excellent very efficient don't you love pub, you know private enterprise can rely on it awesome this is people who are chained to the devil that's every republican voting texan who's actually been lied to and shafted on a great many levels, but they're so convinced they come from the greatest state and they have this special thing, you know, I know because I come from the Australian version of this state. And they've bought that line. And they've bought it since the Civil War. I would recommend, viewers, I digress for a moment, I would recommend Denise Siegel's, one of her very recent videos, she manages to sum up the history of America and how it affects now and how it goes into the future in five minutes. Brilliant. It's a brilliant rave. I'll put it somewhere. Okay, so these are the people who have been tied to the big lie, not the big lie we think of now, the real big lie, which is American history. Right? They're very threatened by American history. That's why this hysteria around critical race theory. None of these people could describe to you what critical race theory is if their lives depended on it and you offered them $1.5 million. No, but they know they don't like it. And now apparently in some states they want to cut out Rosa Parks from the history books. I mean, this is a desperate last stand of a desperate people. Right. So that's what I think Beto's up against, as well as the obvious thing of big money. It's the mentality that goes with this idea 
that a nation founded on the uh, the genocide and the terrible things that happened to Indigenous people and then built on the back and sweat and blood of slaves and to reinvent that as somehow a good day out, right? That's that. That's the devil. Okay, so now his next two cards are important. If he can tap into this energy, people are starting to realise they're actually out in the cold. So it's like, they spent winter with no power. Now they're spending summer with no power. It might be beginning to dawn on them, you know, because we're always sold this line, privatised power, privatised telecommunications. It's going to make it more competitive and everything's going to be cheaper. It's going to be awesome. Now, when was the last time your power bill went down? let alone the power itself going down. So people are beginning to realise being allied in this way is not in their own best interest. And he represents a new dawn and a new day. And I love him so much for that. Okay, so better that's sort of a symbolic reading, if you like. It's not nitty-gritty how he's going to go. Distribution of votes will get more into the nitty-gritty as we move along, right? But this is what he symbolises in relation to this and this, right? Okay. Now, speaking of subpoenas, as we just were, Roger Stone... Hmm. He was live on air doing some radio squawk show and he was delivered a subpoena live on air. I'm going back to the Toth cards. And I want to see what's going to happen there. People ask me often what's going to happen with Prince Andrew. Is he going to be brought back to America to face charges? No, no, he's not. No. Why? Because he's a British royal. They think he's a lecherous idiot. Yeah, they all know. The family, they've cut him off from all the public engagements. He only had to shake a few hands pre-COVID and cut a ribbon twice a year to be on some stupendous amount of taxpayers' money anyway. But even though they know he's a total toss-up, as they say in the UK, not a flattering term, but they're not going to give him up to American authorities, I can assure you. No, no, no. Okay. So here we go with what's Roger Stone. Roger Stone. Roger Stone. Oh, oh, he gets the death card too. Oh, look. <laughs> the cards are telling me what he's like, but I want to know what's going to happen. I'm going to lay some others on top. The quick version. When I put those cards back together, I put them separately in the pack and then I shuffled and three of those cards have come up again. Why? Because you can't tell Roger Stone from a long lost uncle of the Trump family. They're so enmeshed. We've got the same cards. Okay. He gets the false knight. That would be himself. The Prince of Wands, this is a bit of a different interpretation of it. I think this is him. He's been very successful, if you like them like that, in terms of broadcasting his message. He too gets the death card and he gets the lust for power card. So I want to know, is he going to make a legal appearance or not? Is he going to testify or refuse? What's the next step? Um, okay. Roger Stone. Okay. Oh, look, he might get away with it. Whatever it is he's charged with, 
I don't think it's going to translate into much. Oh, don't you hate that? He's at a crossroads. This is the money that's behind him, around him, supporting him. He gets the star, which can be the USA coming in. I thought, oh, maybe it means that. But he gets the star and the lovers, excuse me, meaning pacts and agreements. These are not the cards of a guy who's going to be convicted of anything. Sorry. However, maybe I'll be wrong. Doesn't happen a lot. But you know what? I'd be there going, oh, he's got a six-year sentence. Remember I said he'd be fine. I was wrong. I'll be the first on camera to do that. But, look, they'll be, hopefully they're so busy with the trunks. Okay, now I had some figures I wanted to share with you. Oh, yeah, no, this is the other thing I want to do today. I'll, I'll use my neutral cards. Christopher Ray, how come Christopher Ray still has a job? By any performance measures, anybody's KPIs, this guy is hopeless, right? You know, so oh, he ignored the 4,500 tip-offs that were saying Kavanaugh's a worry, Kavanaugh is a problem, don't put Kavanaugh up before you know this. Comey, who was equally useless, also ignored them because I think their changeover came during that case. But in any event, Comey, followed by Ray, managed to miss 4,500 tips on a hotline about Brett Kavanaugh. Can't forgive them, won't forgive them. Um, under his watch, yeah, all the insurrectionists on the day of January 6th let them all out of the building and did everything but give them their bus fare home. Remember, we were all shocked at the time and then gradually, uh, having spent millions of dollars of your taxpayer money, to then track them down and have to wait for some ex-wife to say, look, he's in the garage, you know, shouldn't have happened. They should have been arrested as they left the building. You know, these people are slow learners. They need the punishment to be attached to the action. You know how you teach four-year-olds? They need that. Oh, wrong place, wrong time. Now I've been arrested. You know, Christopher Ray. All right, so is he going to go? Well, he's going to go. They only sacked him two weeks ago or something. Oh, no, that was another guy. No, my question is, is he going to go? The other thing he didn't do was follow up the serial sexual predator of the United States gymnastics team. Remember poor little Simone Bales and all the others who had to put up with being molested for years by Larry Nassar, I think his name was. And he's been allowed to go until two weeks ago. He was finally sacked. Thank you, Christopher Ray. On to it. I think the FBI needs a clean out. Is he going to go? Can we find out why he hasn't gone? Where is he going to go? We want to know all of it. He's going to go. All of it. Mysterious. Well, yes, you could say that. Oh, God. He's got protection. Hmm. Okay. Look, he's a dark horse, as they used to say. I don't think he could lie straight in bed. He doesn't look particularly sinister, but I think he is. And I think he's actually worse than we think. I thought he was just incompetent and should go. But there's more to Christopher Ray. 
Okay. Now, this is the argument going round and around. This is, you know, Biden, all the others, how can we get rid of him? Do, 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 do. Um, sack him tomorrow. No, we can't sack him yet. Whatever their conversations are that are holding this up. He might be pushed sideways. By that, I mean, see, here's the unwanted opportunity. I don't think they're going to sack him in disgrace. I think they're going to go, oh, well, now, Mr. Ray, uh, you know, we'll put you in charge of something. I don't think he should be in charge of watering the house plants. He should not be in charge of anything else. I think they're going to push him sideways. Who is they? They are those with power, influence and money who put him in in the first place because they thought, here, we have a puppet, and they did. Okay, so this is the problem with the corporate Dems too. And their hands aren't pristine either. And I think this is money that crosses both parties that has held it up until now. I think it's harder to defend him. They're, they're working it out. They're working it out. But my contribution to this conversation is they're going to not sack him, they're going to move him sideways somewhere in the government. And I think that's an appalling outcome. That's what they used to do with the pedophile priests. You know, oh, that's simply terrible. We'll move Father Benedict, you know, 200 miles away. This sort of stuff has to stop. And it has to stop on the Democrats' watch. It just does. All right, beloved intrepid viewers. Now, I will put up that Denise Siegel video for you and keep the comments rolling. Good to see you. Bye. Okay. Found the button now. So I will say ciao, ciao.